New Zealand's rowers make games history in Tokyo as they get on the podium not once, not twice, but three times in 60 minutes of medal mayhem. Michael Venus and Marcus Daniel cap off an epic day with doubles bronze. And the Black Ferns juggernaut rolls on to the semi-finals and a chance for revenge against Fiji. Welcome to Focus Sport, this is the Olympics News Wrap. Kia ora, I'm Shuri Kinnian. Arguably the greatest day in New Zealand rowing unfolded on the waters of Tokyo's Sea Forest Waterway yesterday. This the front page of the Herald and Sports section this morning. So let's take a look at how our golden hour all unfolded. Emma Twig kicked things off with gold in the single skulls. She stacked up a commanding lead at the halfway mark, eventually crossing the line with an Olympic best time. Her victory comes after missing out on Olympic glory in 2008, 2012 and 2016. The last two were back-to-back -back fourth place finishes. And the emotion of it all so clear as she hung that gold medal around her neck and watched the New Zealand flag being raised. Today was spe really special and um, it's not something that I'll forget in a hurry um, but it's also just so satisfying to know that you know 20 years of graft um, and some some pretty um, challenging moments and I managed to to do what I knew that I could do. Moments later our gold medalists from the women's pair Grace Prendergast and Kerry Gowler they jumped in the women's eight to help lead the team to its first ever Olympic medal a stunning silver. A dream launched more than three game cycles ago, finally coming to fruition. And if things couldn't get any better, Hamish Bond in the men's eight, who only booked their spot in Tokyo at the very last minute and then had to negotiate a repercharge appearance, topped off the extraordinary hour of action claiming gold. Bond at the same time etched his name into the history books as the only New Zealander so far to win gold in three consecutive Olympics. You know, that's incredibly special. Um, really proud of the guys. Um, we've got a, a diverse group, um, you know, some old, some young, more experienced, inexperienced. Uh, so for everyone to show maturity beyond their years today was, was something pretty special. And obviously to be part of a, a really great day for the New Zealand Olympic team and particularly the rowing team um, is, is pretty cool. But the history making didn't stop there. Tennis duo Michael Venus and Marcus Daniel won New Zealand's fourth medal of the day and first ever in tennis, claiming bronze in straight sets in the doubles competition. Elsewhere, the race is on for our sailing crews to qualify for their respective medal races. Alex Maloney and Molly Meech finished eighth in their race of the day to sit ninth overall. Peter Burling and Blair Chook, meanwhile, took the lead in their 49er class with three strong results. And Paul Snow Hansen and Dan Wilcox set themselves up on course for a medal in the men's 470, now in third overall. The Blackburns march on in their quest for gold after smashing the Russian Olympic Committee 36-0 in the quarters. They'll now face Fiji in the semi-finals. David Nika guaranteed himself a medal in the men's heavyweight boxing after beating his Belarusian opponent to reach the semis. He's set to become New Zealand's first Olympic boxing medalist in 29 years and he'll be back in the ring for his semi-final on Tuesday. As the athletics events got underway, Dame Valerie Adams, Maddie Wesher and Hamish Kerr all booked their final spots. And in other news, BMX rider Rebecca Pitch, swimmer Lewis Clebert, track runner Camille Bushcombe and the Black Sticks men have all bowed out of the Games. In international news, Novak Djokovic's hopes of winning a Golden Slam are over after he lost to Alexander Zverev in the tennis semi-finals. And while we experienced great success on the water, the great British team were left scratching their heads over what went wrong. Their two medals in the men's quad and eight is the team's lowest haul since Atlanta 1996 and the first time the team has failed to win a gold medal in the rowing since 1980. But they're still in a decent six on the medals table as we take a look at how everyone's tracking. The US and China again right at the top and Kiwis, yes, you're seeing that right. We are now 12th on the table, a massive jump after our medal blitz.
And there's more action to come. The Black Sticks women are back today against China, while our Blackfern Sevens play Fiji. And depending on how they get on, the bronze and gold medal matches are later in the night. Our sailors continue from just after 3 o'clock. There's some weightlifting. And the Ollie Whites play their quarterfinal against Japan at 9 o'clock. Well, some great action set to unfold again today. And if you're out and about in Auckland, make sure you head down to the cloud where they have a fan zone set up. Here's a quick look at the awesome setup down there. Tons of activities for the kids down there so they can come down here. Uh, I've been watching the boxing earlier. That was really epic. Um, and it's really good atmosphere. You know, you can get a drink, you can uh, bring a crowd along here. Um, and, you know, they've got a set up with... Um, basically everything that's going on at the same time, so you can see it all on the one, one screen if you want to. So, uh, yeah, get on down, it's bloody brilliant. Well, it looks like a great place to be. I would have loved to be down there myself when this historic day unfolded. Now, in just over a week's time, one flat in Cambridge could be the new home for multiple Olympic medals. And that's because it's the home of three of our Olympic athletes, Regan Goff, Max Brown and Jordan Kirby. The trio started flying together a few years ago, coming together by mere coincidence. So we headed down there earlier this year to check out their crib. What's up New Zealand Herald? Welcome to our crib. Regan's been running an orphanage for the last five years and he's sort of had about most of the athletes who've lived in Cambridge over the, over the last five years. Yeah, moved into this uh, massive crib <laughs> about Palace. a year ago and um, yeah, I've been here on and off for a year and a bit now. Oh yeah, we set Kirby's alarm, make sure he gets out of bed yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I have to get out of bed to clean the dishes at Max Lee. <laughs> and welcome to the man cave. So uh, most nights we settle all our sort of competitive debates on the pool table. Uh, a good example is the rubbish bins on Tuesday. So whoever loses the, the best of three has to take the bins out, usually in the pouring rain or, or some situation like that. So mainly it's Regan, not me. Basically we just give each other a hard time <laughs> and that keeps keeps us in line, yeah. Regan and Jordan, they get underway on Monday night in the team's pursuit while Max will make his games debut on Wednesday if you want to follow any of their journeys. And you can watch that full video with premium access on the New Zealand Herald. And while you're there, the New Zealand Herald has you covered for all the action. Stay up to date with when New Zealanders are competing and how they're doing with our real-time Kiwi Games tracker and find out more about our athletes and teams with our interactive schedule. Simply click on a name to look at their bios, past games performances, upcoming events and medal chances. Plus, you can catch live commentary of key events on News Talk ZB, the official radio broadcast partner of the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. We'll also have expert analysis on the DRS and Sports Talk, as well as our daily Olympic podcast, Tokyo in 20. Well, lots of platforms to choose from there as we gear up for day nine. We're just over the halfway point now. But if you happen to miss any of it, I will be back here tomorrow morning to wrap all of the news and more. I'm Sheree Kinnear for Focus Sport.